It was the dream of my life to arrive to Cuba by yacht. It was so generous of her, I almost cried. It was very touching and very, very nice. And she said she wanted to give me a gift. And I said, no, I want to know how you live. Bring me to your house. We've met people. We couldn't even understand each other. I always dream to discover the Cuban culture. We decided to go to Cuba before heading to the Bahamas. Hey, I'm like that. Anything goes. When we had the idea to go to Cuba, my mom, Sylvie, was very, very excited. And I was also excited about it because who ever went to Cuba by boat? Of course, for me, those travels are very stressful. So I was very, very happy to have my mom with me. It was a dream of my life to arrive to Cuba by yacht. And I never thought it would happen. My daughter left Canada beginning of October. She called me and she, she told me, you know, we're gonna go to Cuba if you come, mom. <laughs> I flew right away. I was so excited to see my daughter. We've never been separated so long and it's kind of scaring and I'm stressed when they are like long times on the sea. So uh, I was scared a little bit as well, but I did it, I'm here. Well, we left Key West at 17.30 hours. And right now it's 1910 hours. We have 92.6 miles to go. Uh, we should arrive at 9.30 tomorrow morning. We really can't wait, man. Go to Veradero, go to Havana. We're like all really giddy in the boat. We're really, really excited. We really want to get there. Well, it's 2015 hours. And everything seems to go be going well. I had Chloe go out and uh, check underneath the engine, see if there's anything leaking, see if there's anything not going well. Everything's going well. This is a Rita 5. I'm uh, two miles to your uh, port, and I just want to know your heading and uh, speed over. We are doing about 1414 knots through the water and over the ground. Thank you very much for the information. Rita 5, uh, over and out. going crazy a while ago we have a uh, autopilot and so uh, you know I decided to do a really stupid thing I decided to turn it off and I figure I'll turn it back on and the thing will reset itself right well no it did not reset itself and like the boat starts going like this and then I go oh shit then I I, I start <laughs> turning the steer wheel the boat goes like that then it goes like this then it goes like that then it goes like this then it goes like that I go oh my god oh my god my god so I turned it back on and it's on standby again. It's about at 165 degrees. I press auto and it works. I go, oh, oh, wow, it's working. And then I start turning the degrees and I notice the numbers aren't changing on the screen, but the screen has still this like funky display on it. So I go, oh, you gotta be kidding me, it's not working. And then I look at the GPS and oops, slowly the track is coming. But you know what, it's back. It's 12.30 and we're heading straight. Uh, my wife is next up the hill and I'll get up tomorrow morning before we arrive in Veradero to get ready to go into port. Hey. So it's 2 a.m. and we have 49 miles to go. Uh, right now I am surrounded by ships. So nothing happens when Jason is at the wheel and there's five ships around me when I am at the wheel. Go figure. Hey, it's the Frenchie. I'm driving the boat tonight. We are 20 miles away from Cuba. Chloe is sleeping, Jason also, and also the mothers of Chloe is sleeping. Ship Rita 5 is calling Cuba, do you receive me? Rita 5 is calling Cuba, do you receive me? 
Ya te grita cinco llamando a Cuba, me reciben. Grita cinco llamando a Cuba, me reciben. Well, we finally made it to Cuba, and then as we arrive into Cuba, we had the luck of having two boats escort us just outside of visual range. But hey, a little bit of rest, and it's time to explore Cuba. <laughs> beginning of the trip, I have the chance with Jason and Chloe to see the greatest place in the world. It was really amazing. But when Jason told me that we have the chance to go last minute in Cuba, so I was like, oh my God, I always dream to discover the Cuban culture. That was really a dreamy destination. Of course, you have to go by the beaches if you come to Cuba. And uh, beaches are not all about tanning. You know, you, have, you can do a lot of things on the beach. I know I've got a pretty tan now, but we've played volleyball, we've met people, we couldn't even in, in understand each other. But if you play a game, you don't need to understand each other. You just play the game and that's it. No rules, free for all. And I've also uh, joined a dance on the beach with my mom. So we had a lot of fun with that. I'm living with Chloe and Jason for the traveling since two months. So we have the chance to know each other better and better. And Chloe become like my little sister for the travel. So when we go to the beach, we really have fun together. <laughs> and, and I love to wrestling with her in the water. I played with the Frenchie. He tried to beat me up. It didn't work. Uh, I drowned him. <laughs> <laughs> Having been to Veradero before, I knew that there was a bus that you can take. It's $5 per person and it's for the whole day. So you take the little bus, it brings you all around Veradero and you can stop at the shopping places, the artisanal things and whatnot. And also what's nice is at the end of the strip, you walk a little bit and you get to Al Capone's house. I'd seen it before, but I thought I'd share the experience with everyone. And then after that, we walked back and we had a beautiful day out in Veradero. If you go to Cuba, you have to stop by those Cuban artisanal flea markets. There's a lot of them. There's stuff for everyone. They have tons of hats and dresses. I tried a bunch of hats. I tried to find one that was fitting me and I was posing for Jason and looking pretty and everything. You will absolutely find not only souvenirs, but useful stuff. So we had the chance to interview um, the artist of an art gallery. They do pottery there and they sell a bunch of stuff that's beautiful. Eh, mi nombre es Juan Raúl Díaz Power. Soy uno de los artistas del taller de cerámica de Varadero. ¿Cuánto tiempo uh, para hacer uno de este tamaño? De dos horas, tres horas. Hacemos todo. Hacemos mucho. Después metemos al horno todo. Estos somos separadores. Se montan aquí. Okay. Se van montando, se acomodan las piezas, se, se pone otro y... Se pone otro, se pone otro y así. Primera vez es 800 grados. Y en 15 días damos color. Hay que esperar 15 días. Sí, hay que esperar 15 días que porque la... que todo sé que Pintar un tiempo, no sé, 30, 40 minutos, uh -huh. aplicar colores. Son pinturas de 800, 1000 grados de temperatura. Ok, que está... O sea, todos esos colores, cuando pasan al fuego, es como sale cristal, otro. Okay. sale otra cosa, sí. Antes de estar así, ¿qué es? Es eh, una, una bolsa de... Líquido. Pero originalmente esto, ¿eh? Eso es el barro. De la tierra natural, de, sí, de la naturaleza. El... <risa> Curioso, ¿eh? Right. My first trip to Cuba was in 1991. Chloe, my daughter, was only six months. And I went uh, to an hotel and uh, my maid, 28 years ago, became my best friend. I went shopping for Chloe and she saw what I bought for my daughter. And she asked me to go shop for her because at that time the Cubans were not allowed to have money and go to the store. So I went shopping for her and I, she gave me the money and I bought a lot of more things. 
and she said she wanted to give me a gift. And I said, no, I want to know how you live. Bring me to your house. And she bring me to her house in Cardenas. And each time I go to Cuba, I go to her house. We went to see my mom's friends. They're so welcoming. They treat us like family every time we see them. We don't see them a lot, but every time I feel like I'm one of their daughters, and it's very nice. Eileen, which is Marilyn's daughter, she's a hair stylist. So she made her, her hair stylist room in the house, well, the parents' house in the living room. I was really happy to learn that Sylvie will be with us on the boat, as she lived in Cuba in the past, so she knows lots of people here. And my way to travel is to get out of the touristic place and the touristic hotel, to meet the real people, to know the real culture, to see how they really live in their house, to, to taste their foods. And Sylvie can offer this to me. We took a taxi to go to Cardenas because we needed to do some provisioning for the boat. Plus, we were also invited for supper. In Cuba, once you're out of the touristic zone, you look for the street merchant to get veggies, fruits and bread. Then you can go to the grocery store for the rest. The woman just cut the cheese with the same knife she cut the ham and she just gave it to me like this. We went to the house of my friend Norlin Suarez in Cardenas and his parents are like just lovely. They received us and they, make, they made us uh, food like king. The mother of Norlin worked all day to prep the food. Their kitchen is so pretty with all the colors on the walls and they also have only the minimum equipment and don't have a lot of money, but they still made us a feast. The decoration of the home is very minimalistic. All the frames on the walls are family pictures. The windows are covered with steel shutters to prevent the dust from entering the house since they are located in an industrial zone. Hola. I know him since uh, two years now. It's going to be two years in January. And each time I, I go there, this lady is just so sweet. She made such a great lunch. It was excellent. It was so welcoming, the food was amazing. Not only the fact she made a huge table of food for us, she also gave us a bunch of fruits, she gave us meat, she gave us, like she was looking around her house and trying to find stuff to give us. It was so generous of her, I almost cried. It was very touching and very, very nice. They also have their own garden where they grow plantain, tomatoes, goyavas, and sour orange. As we're in uh, Cuba, of course, we have to visit Havana. We had a taxi for the day to go to the Havana. We stopped at some looking point that was very nice, very beautiful to take picture of, and then he left us in the city. Havana is the capital of Cuba. It has 2.1 million inhabitants and is also the fourth largest city in the Caribbean. The city was founded in 1592 by the Spanish during the conquest of the Americas. El Capitolio Nacional was founded in 1929. It was the Senate and the House of the Representative. It contains also the third largest indoor statue, La Estatua de la República. There's more than a million tourists a year that visit this beautiful city, and it was declared a National Historic Site from UNESCO in 1982. The Old Havana was the original city of the Havana. It was founded in 1519 by the Spanish. In 1959, after the Cuban Revolution, they did not have enough money to maintain the buildings and the monuments. Lots of people are currently living in the old luxury casinos and hotels, which are collapsing over time. At the moment, they have been able to restore only 10% of the large city. Havana is really a beautiful city and we love seeing it. I'd recommend spending at least 3-4 days there. 
If you go see the restaurants of the local people, it costs you only a dollar, dollar fifty for a meal, versus fifteen or twenty dollars in the tourist restaurants. I really like the city. It's so colorful and beautiful. It's very, very nice to see. You have to go to the Havana. We're going snorkeling in Cuba! Woo! Huge Cuban reef. Now we're gonna see some awesome fish, man. Thank <laughs> you.